morning people well today we have an appointment at 12 p.m can you guess what it's to do with obviously it's the archaeology and metal detecting magazine but uh anything any clues i can give you for where we're going anyway i believe this is going to be exceptional visit uh, we're going to do it as an interview for a vlog and also for in the magazine itself so uh without further ado our day out so here we are in Macclesfield at the Viking Axe we've been invited along today have a look around and uh, I must say it's absolutely fascinating uh, before we even start talking about Viking Axe throwing we've been talking about history we've been talking about uh, anthropology or all sorts to get to, to uh, the Viking Age and some of the uh, recreational items that he's got in there that he's made himself uh, Mr Andrew Mayo, Mayo are absolutely stunning uh, everything from jewellery fruit to uh, the axes themselves to swords to knives uh, to shield absolutely stunning so we're gonna have a walk through and uh, chat with Andy as well so uh, just for your information that's the telephone number uh, the website and the email to contact them so this is the Viking axe so uh, we'll pop on in and uh, have a look round. So, this is Mr. Andrew Mayer. Hello. And he is the proprietor yep. and uh, head Viking head of Viking. the uh, the Viking Axe. So, uh, give us a brief introduction of you, well, Andrew. Well, this is uh, well. This all started because I am a cabinet maker by trade, and I couldn't get another job because of my age. So, uh, I had this idea that I could teach people to throw axes. And that kind of idea caught on, and I kind of thought, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So I had a word with the business advisor. We had funds because my mother-in-law died and left my wife some funds. And with that, we've started up the Viking Axe. And it's been brilliant. It's been absolutely fun. Um, they always say, you, if you do what you love, then you don't work another day in your life. So this is basically where I'm up to. So... We have had to make some adap adaptations for COVID, so we've got hand gels, we've got um, screens and one thing and another, and we try to keep uh, a, a good distance, but each, group's, each group that comes in uh, is considered to be a social bubble, um, a support bubble, so as a consequence we are reducing the numbers of people that are able to come in. Um, so we're going to actually have longer working hours just to accommodate that so that mm -hmm. we can make a living and all we're interested in is making a living not a fortune. Mm. So that's about, about it. So easy. I've had a look around Andrew and, and some of the things in here are absolutely fascinating as we can see by some of the, uh, the, 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 the bleh, weapons and such like on the wall. Uh, these I take it you mostly have made yourself? Uh, yes except for the bow and the arrow head. Uh huh. But the, uh, the some absolutely stunning. Now the musical instrument on the left hand side. You have told me what it's called, but it's, uh, yeah, it's Anglo-Saxon lyre. Anglo-Saxon lyre, and you've also got another little item that you. It's a complete one-off because you made it yourself. Uh, be, musical yeah. instrument, and it's. Uh, I take it it's got its origins in Viking music. Uh. It doesn't actually. No, no it's, it's based on a banjo. Um, but it's heavily Viking themed, so we've got Munin and Hogin, or Munin and Hunin, uh, depending on how you want to want to say it. Those are out of uh, reclaimed rosewood. And then we've got walnut, fir walnut. On the back we've got, this is made of pitch pine. Then mahogany, uh, we've got rosewood and ivory recovered from a old piano. Uh, we've got spruce, we've got oak, we've got a zebrano, uh, and even even the bridge is made out of rosewood. And that's a complete one-off that that's you've created yourself? Yeah, well, it has a curious profile on it. Uh, and I thought, well, y you know, like when you have a, a satellite dish, it sort of projects into the dish and then comes out. I've never seen that before. And I thought, well, that's, surely that's a mechanism that is possible. And... So as a consequence, you have this ridge in the centre to, to push the sound out that way, mm. and you've got a sound reservoir in here, and I just wondered what the dynamics would be. So the only way to know is to build it. And you've called it a... Well, like a... 
Yes, one of them. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I went for that, um, because there's a Russian instrument called a balalaika, and it has a triangular body, so that's got a triangular body, so I thought, why not call it a, hal a laika? So, and, well, halalaika. Absolutely, marvellous. And then there's, uh, these are actually piano keys. And Beautiful. That is, uh, that's made of deer antlers. Mm. So, obviously, we look around. There's lots of uh, Viking-type related bits and bobs. Uh, all over the place, Andy's little workspace. So, Andy's going to take us now into the what do we call this area itself? Our throwing, uh, our throwing lanes. That's why it's got throwing lanes written up there. Throwing the lanes in runic. <laughs> well, it's in English. It's just using uh, the Elder Fusark as, a, as, as an alphabet. Right. Because technically it's not an alphabet, it's a fusark. So, after you then, sir, and we'll, uh, we'll go for a. Now, obviously, I've been in here and it, it's just absolutely stunning. And here we have examples of types of rigging, uh, rigging that were used. Um, and so this is holding you, this will hold the sail up. And so you want to get your sail down in a bit of a hurry. That comes up, that comes down, and the whole thing is released. And that's how you get your sail down in a bit of a bit of a rush. Ah, oh, wow! And so that's that's period accurate. These are going to period accurate. Uh, this should be about this big. Um, but, you know, it, it gives you an idea of, of how these things were. It's tactile as well. Mm. It's really, really quite tactile. But there's photographs of things. So here's Archeo Boy, and Archeo Boy's been having a having a dabble with the, um, how, how can we tennis term ball. it? The, the, Viking, <laughs> the Viking era tennis ball on a stick. Yeah, well, Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Did you He's win? Doing good at it. Yeah. Did you flick your wrist? Fantastic. Get there. <laughs> <laughs> so, as, as you can see, uh, we've got shields. This one is a, an accurate shield. Yes, uh, accurate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's made of planked wood, covered in the fabric, uh, steel boss. I didn't make that boss. I have made some bosses, but they're a nuisance to make, so I just buy them from uh, from the night shop. And then the reverse of that is a typical typical type handle that you'd have and when you're actually holding these things you think you hold it like that you actually don't mm -hmm. you hold it like that and you're actually striking everything with your thumb I'm with you so always using that thumb as a pointer to strike and then you can turn it in and then you're striking this way and as you're striking you'll actually feel the muscles working in exactly the direction they need to work mm -hmm. to generate that kind of force and this was their primary weapon not just a, a shield as we know a shield yeah. but was a, a weapon also yeah it was their first go-to because if you take a, if you take an axe or a sword doesn't really make much else you have a situation where this goes out first there and then you're back in again you can throw these or you can just for close quarters same is true with the sword uh, this sword handle is actually a little bit too long that one's the proper size uh, we also have blocks which will create a dead stop for anything coming in that way you tip that down and off the back of that you've got your riposte and then you keep in your hand out of danger all the time and it goes into danger for the shortest amount of time and then it comes back in again now you've actually made a, a video on youtube where uh, with with that type with of, sort of so so what i'll do i'll put another for the for the, the viewers we'll put another uh, article together introducing that video and and obviously you can talk more about that but um so anybody's views is really really appreciated if yeah. somebody sort of says well that doesn't make sense tell me please <laughs> because, do yeah. any any comments we'll uh Obviously, you can put into the um, into the area below the video on wherever we publish it. But all the information will get over to Andrew, and, and he'll be able to uh, communicate, or you might alter your mindset, or vice versa. Oh, yeah. uh, everything I, I've always said, everything I know is absolutely true until proven not to be the case. Mm. So, yeah. so here we are, the Viking axe in Macclesfield. Uh, a few dressing up objects, some fantastic helmets. And uh, each lane has its own name. So, 
I'm not going to try and pronounce it because I'll get it wrong. That's Freya. Freya. Beautiful snake. Uh, have we got one on this side? Yeah, we've got Sif. Sif. And then we've got Thor. The one that everybody will know. Also known in the Anglo Saxon world as Tunor. Ah. Tunor. Then we've got Loki. And without Loki, you wouldn't have things like the Mjolnir, the Hammer of uh, Thor, you wouldn't have Gunganir, Odin Spear, you have very, mm. none of these things were it not for Loki. Really? And all these things came about out for selfish, selfish motives. But uh, yeah, he furnished the gods with many, mm. many wonderful things, including Slipnir. Odin's, uh, Odin's horse, his eight legged horse, was born of Loki. Mm. He's actually the child of Loki. Fascinating. There's, there's so much Viking lore. You could you could lose yourself in it completely. You could. You have to. What I've always found with any of these mythological things, always keep your feet on the ground. Don't sort of get swept away with it all. Just why does this happen? Why is these things being said? Uh, you've got Eliafuliakoth, which went up in Iceland. That went up. Fjuda is a giant that when he says come on boys let's go the rest follow him so we now know that that whole row of, 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 of um, volcanoes are likely to go up because mm. Katla is the next in the row and so when Fula goes up then the rest of them go up and that's observation in a lifetime that people have noticed this so they're communicating this in a mythological way mm -hmm. which I think is just uh, the simplest and easiest way to for people to understand mm. how the sea moves. You've got um, you've got Njord and you've got Ega, two different types of sea situation, where you keep away from Ega. You don't go get tangled up in Ega. That particular pattern of sea, you don't get tackled tangled up in that. You ride the back of Njord, that particular type, and this is how they communicate vital information with regards to um, day to day living. Mm. Now, Andrew, can I ask for a demonstration? Let's uh, show the viewers your axe. Tell us about your axe first. Well, this one is actually my 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 uh, my go-to one. This is not the ones we normally use. This one's actually a Damascus steel axe. Uh, I didn't make the head, but I did adapt it quite heavily because it was a very peculiar shape, and I got it a good good discount because some of it wasn't uh, wasn't quite great. But that bit just got cut away. And so this one is, it's even underneath the, the, the binding. We also have, um, oh, what's it called? Stingray skin. So just to add a little bit of grip. Mm. So and what, what weight is that about? This is, this is uh, half a kilo. Right. And they're all about half a kilo. So the throwing area, we've got uh, between the gold and the silver line. Yeah, a gold line, um, anybody that comes in uh, who is, has, has is throwing an axe. A gold line, the axe doesn't go beyond that point. Mm -hmm. They're told, don't take it beyond that point. Sometimes, a lot of times people forget and we just go, gold line, gold line, gold line. And then they bring it back because everywhere in here is sharp spree. We keep that sharp spree by saying, just don't take the sharp out there mm. because they are sharp. Wow. <laughs> and that's half inch size little rope. Yeah. So, and so, in this particular, and we'll call it a game for... Oh, it's a game. So yeah. it's a game. Okay. We've got the board at the end, yeah. similar to a dartboard shape, etc. And it's got a range of circles within it, yeah. uh, ranging from five through to the centre bullseye would be 25 points. It yeah. And uh, basically you're aiming on how many throws? Nine throws. The reason we've got nine throws is because there's nine rounds in North Smith. Right. So we've just included that in our scoring system. <laughs> so nine throws to basically get as much as you can out of it. Perfect throw. There we go. So what about what, 20 points there? That's a 20, yeah. Because all you have to do, that's actually, that is actually well in. But if you hit in, it lands about there, and just snagging that line, that highest score is yours anyway. Right. So all you've got to do is cut that line a little bit like... Um, Archery, same mm. principle. If you cut that line, the highest score is yours. And these bullseyes from 11 feet away are the size of a 5p piece. I know that because I started drawing these out with a with a 5p. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so they're about 18 millimeters in diameter. Um, slightly, slightly bigger than you find on the dartboard. And our insurer actually, our first insurer said to us, uh, yeah, everything you've done is absolutely superb. And what you've done in addition to that is just mind blowing, but it won't affect your premium. Ah, oh, go figure. Uh, but they said the only criticism we got is this bullseye. They said it's too small and people are going to get frustrated because uh, they're not hitting the bullseye. A lot of people get the bullseye and our record for bullseyes in an hour is 26. Wow. So somebody's actually come in and that was his first, first time here. He just had an eye for it and he just went up and down and he knocked out 26 bullseyes mm. in one hour. And you've also got leagues. Obviously, they've been affected by COVID nineteen and the the, you know, the shutdowns and everything. But yeah. you have a league, and obviously, a lot of people come and take part in the league. We have yes, and we're we're actually finishing our winter league. So the summer league usually starts will have would have started now. So the winner of this year's uh, summer league is COVID nineteen. <laughs> Absolutely. So get, let's get it a prize. Winter. Yeah, winter goes into winter. Uh, we also, in addition to the um, just throwing numbers, we also have strings. So the idea with that one is that that hangs up onto one of these little cracks that's created by people best throwing. I see. And then <coughs> the idea then is to, man. instead of Instead of throwing it straight, because if you throw it straight, it will end up going in straight. But if you tip it off at an angle, you can actually get it in at an angle. Mm. So it's a question of just trying to cut that piece of string and the weight falls. Ah. To give you. But then, on top of that, we also have what we call our jots. I'm going to have to go around here to find one. Okay. There we go. Oh, this is one of our jots. The reason they're called jots is because I was trying to work out a way of getting these things to move and stay moving. And a friend of mine, Jordan, he, uh, he said, well, why don't you just drill a, a hole in the end of the targets and jab a stick, it, stick in it and then swing it from a, from a fixed point. So they're now Jordan Oscillating Target System <laughs> jots. So that goes on to there. Um, ah, I was wondering what that was for. And then you can lift it up, you can lift it down, and you can put it anywhere you like, and then you've got a moving target. Fantastic. Then we've got a funky little, funky little um, liking face to try and hit. So, generally, in the UK, you'd find most Viking-related things are over in York. So this is uh, this is something in the northwest which yeah. is it's fantastic. It's coming and out of Dane Law. Mm. Coming, so Vikings were here. Yep, they are. Yeah. The River Danes just down the road. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it's a fantastic place, and I really would suggest people who are interested have a Google, uh, look for the website, find them on Facebook. Uh, all the links will be provided on this video or in in the article itself. And uh, come and visit the Viking Axe in Macclesfield. It's uh, it's it's some place. It really is. Even if it's just to put one of the furs on and a helmet on and have your picture taken as a Viking, Andy, it's a fantastic concept. It really is. It's the first, obviously, the first one I've been to, and I will certainly be participating in the in the near future. Thank you. There are Urban X throwing places you can go, uh, they are great, they're absolutely fantastic, good reviews on, on, on many of them, but invariably it's in a warehouse on an industrial estate and you just have a target and somewhere to sit. But we're offering a bigger and more rounded out experience. Mm. And the crucial thing is if you do have any questions regarding um, Norse mythology, anything to do with renology, or um, just ask, just ask, and if I know the answer, I'll tell you. If I don't know the answer, I will find out. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. Well, I'm Dave Sadler, and this is Andrew Mayo at the Viking Axe, and I can't thank you enough for 
inviting me along today and, and giving me a good look around. It's been absolutely brilliant and it's uh, it's given me things to think about as well. So I appreciate that very much. So uh, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, the Viking Axe in Macclesfield. Have a Google for it. I'm sure you'll find it, but all the information will be in the video or on the comments. Take care, y'all. So this is Archeo Boy with his Viking tennis ball on a stick. Good shot. Give us another one. Fantastic shot. Well done. Did you enjoy that? Why don't you get an axe now, Dad? Oh, we'd have to let him get him to go through the induction tank yeah. later. Well, that was the Viking Axe in Macclesfield. There it is, the Viking Axe. And it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to visit her today and learn off Andy, because we haven't just spoke about the, the, the Viking Axe throwing itself, but I've learned so much that I've got to look into personally, uh, historically. Uh, you know, some of the things that that he's shown me, I had absolutely no idea about. So uh, I've had a great time. It's been so much fun and, uh, it's been a great experience. I didn't have a go at axe throwing because obviously you have to go through a big induction at the moment due to it being closed. I didn't want to do that, so I'm actually going to come back in the near future and participate. So uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give the Viking Axe in Macclesfield a look. And if you're local, then if you're not, travel up and have a go. It's right by the train station. Take care.